Hey YouTube, Get Yourself Junkie 369 and in this short video I figured I'd cover the bucking bars that you most likely want to have for working on your RV 10 or any RV for that matter. Now, probably 98% of the time my go-to Bucking bar, actually can't be 98, maybe more like 95% of the time. My go-to bucking bar is this little 5 8 inch thick, 1 inch wide, 4 inch long bucking bar. And normally a bar that small wouldn't have very much mass to it and it would take forever to set a rivet. Uh, weight of the bucking bar is probably one of the most important slash largest contributing factor to how fast a rivet sets. I mean the rivet gun plays a role but the mass of this thing I've noticed is a, a really big factor in setting a rivet and the speed that that occurs and how many strikes it takes. Uh, like I said normally this thing would be pretty light bar but this is made out of tungsten. It's going to set you back w well over a hundred dollars. But it's almost as if this one bar can eliminate a whole variety of steel bars that you would normally have to get. And because steel is so much lighter, they have to be bigger bars. Because they're bigger bars, you need a variety of them to fit into different spaces. Like you might have a, a bar that then reduces it down to like something this small so you can squeeze it in there. And then you have another bar that has like an angle offset on it so you can like put that in an area but still have the mass behind it. This thing gets rid of like five, five different bars that you would normally have to have if they're steel. And because it's so small, like you can stick it in there this way or this way to get into tight spots. Or if it's really narrow, you could stick it in between two things long ways and get in there. Uh, the, the options are almost endless. And like I said, this thing go handles 95% of my riveting task because of its small size and then because of the weight it, it sets rivets beautifully. I mean it is amazing. I, I, I am so happy that I listened to people and went with this bar instead of getting something else. Now second most used bar would be kind of a, a toss up. It's going to be for back riveting and the reason I say it's a toss up is because uh, for stuff like the elevator skins there's there was a lot of back riveting and that type of back riveting relied on the back riveting plate. Now in my videos I did not have this back riveting plate. And unfortunately. I had something that was really thin and actually with use it was bending. Now you can go on to Aircraft Spruce uh, you can go on to Spruce Aircraft and they'll have a back riveting plate. I believe that one cost $77. It's from Avery. That sounds right. It is four inches wide. Uh, I want to say 15 or 16 inches long and then three-eighths inch thick. And it's $77, $78, somewhere in there. Or you can do what I did and go to Online Metals and pick up a piece of hot rolled steel. This is four inches wide. Instead of three eighths inch thick, it's half an inch thick. So it's uh, quite massive. It's actually pretty heavy. I'm having to rest my arm on my knee to hold it up. And, and part of the reason I went for that thickness, I wanted a little bit thicker because it is hot rolled. So there's some scale on the finish here. It's not much. You probably wouldn't even care, but because I'm kind of a perfectionist then I want it to look nice, I plan on throwing this in my mill and running across it and basically taking this surface down to a trued up 
perfect polished surface. And then also I'm going to round off the corners so they don't gouge into anything and then maybe even put a uh, 45 on here so that the edges aren't digging in. I noticed one of the reviews on the Avery Bar said that the edges were leaving marks in their skin when they were riveting. And then uh, the other thing is, this is the, the length dimension, instead of being the, the 15 or 16 inches or whatever, this is a full 24 inch plate. And it only cost $38. Uh, there, it was $17 in shipping, but I suspect that the other one would cost nearly the same in shipping. And in addition to this, I bought some other metal for other projects. So really, I don't think that entire shipping cost was just this bar. It's the fact that it went into quite a larger box and there was even more weight in there because of the other stuff I bought. But I mean, we're talking like even with the shipping, full shipping cost added in, we're looking at about $56, I think. So $50 to $5, that's almost a full, actually it's closer to like $27, $28 under just the list price of the other back riveting plate. And that's not even including the shipping that you'll have to pay for the other back riveting plate. So I think that's the way to go. Go to Online Metals, uh, the, the link for this particular piece is in the tool tab on my Excel spreadsheet that I share with you guys in the description of every video. And well worth the cost. Man, that thing's heavy. And, and so that got used during the, like I said, the elevators. So there was quite a few riveting the elevator ribs to the skin that happens that uses that back riveting plate. Um, and then in the future, like with the fuel tank and the reinforcement uh, brackets and stuff like that, there'll be some back riveting there. Uh, other than that, I'm not sure there's any other place to use it, as far as I'm aware. Uh, but there's a lot more back riveting. Like the top skins on the wings are going to be entirely back riveted. And that's where this bucking bar comes in. This is uh, another like five pound chunk of steel. Uh, about three inches across on this diameter and then narrower on this end. So if you had a tight spot, you could uh, theoretically get in there with this. And I saw it being used by somebody in one of their pictures and it took me a while to track down. And again, the link is going to be in the tools tab on my uh, spreadsheet. And, and this thing weighs about six or seven pounds. It's just a chunk of iron that has polished ends. And Basically, all the rivets on the outside of the tail cone were back riveted, which makes them really nice because there's no dimple, really, in the skin from the flush rivet set hitting the rivet. Instead, the rivet set is hitting the back of the rivet, smashing it down, and then this is just supporting the factory head of the rivet. And so there's not any, like striking that can occur to mess up the skin. It makes it nice and flat and smooth instead of having the little indents that you normally get with a flush rivet set. So great way, and there's enough mass here that you just hold it up there and it does all the work. It's not going to be moved by the riveting process. Like it doesn't require much effort to hold this and do the back riveting. And so basically it's a mobile version of the plate where you have to put the plate on the bench or another flat surface like the floor and then rivet. This you can take to the riveting job, which is real great with the tail cone. It'll be used extensively on the top skins, as I said, and probably throughout the entire fuselage, I'm guessing. And so between the two, that is like the second most used type of rivet bar that I recommend getting. You'll definitely need the back rivet plate uh, unless you just really hate yourself on doing the elevators. I mean you can do a normal riveting style but because the pieces are small and thin 
there's a good chance you'll mess something up doing it the standard method. I guess you could get away with squeezing if you had a long enough yoke, but it's not worth it. Plus, that's 38 bucks, and then the cost of a set, which I think is around 13. So definitely worth it. The next, and I say I would say that this bar right here probably accounts for maybe just under two percent of the total rivets. Need to put some oil on this it's starting to get some surface rust because it's not used the only place it's really used is the elevators and it's called like the rv10 slash 14 elevator bucking bar if you go looking for it and it is built per the dimensions of the plans so somebody took the dimensions out of the plans and built this thing um, i think the plans only shows kind of this end where you stick it inside the elevator and kind of use it as a lever to lever up and then this angle matches up with the angle that the rivets are setting at so you can get nice flat manufactured heads. I don't remember if the plans call out the width but this is about an inch wide it's steel so it's fairly cheap I think it was like $23 but then this end has a taper that comes down to about a half inch wide or half inch thick part of the bar and this can be used to get into some of the tighter spots in fact it is called out in one of the sections working on the wings that you probably want to reuse this bar to do a step during the construction of the wings um, what I noticed a lot with this one is it weighs a lot less than this bar. And probably a little bit less than my tungsten bar because it's steel and even though it's that big, it doesn't weigh as much. And because of that, I have to turn the pressure up on the gun or it takes several more strikes to properly set a rivet and I mean it's noticeable I might with the tungsten bar and the settings that I use have to do maybe three short blasts of about five strikes each this with those same settings would take uh, five to seven blasts of about five to eight strikes each blast so that that's where I'm saying that that tungsten bar and the weight is a really important factor but this thing it has a specific task that it's used for there's really not a way I mean you could get away with just a normal bar but without this angle ground into the end of it your rivets aren't going to set up flat basically or parallel to the surface they're the, the heads would be angled and that's not idea so you can make this but my problem was I didn't have a piece of scrap lying around that was long enough and then the time that it would take to make it on top of that fact that I would have to purchase a piece of steel I, I this was cheaper just compared to the material cost like however they paid for the material on this it is cheaper than me going out and buying a piece of metal and doing it if I had a piece of scrap lying around I'd be tempted but still I think just the time it would take to make this would put me like uh, effort into it would be worth more than twenty three dollars so uh, you'll definitely need this one, you'll definitely need the tungsten bar, you'll definitely need at least one back riveting plate. Well, I, said, I guess I shouldn't say you'll definitely need a back riveting plate, but you'll, you'll probably want that. So out, if you only are going with three, back riveting plate, this, and a tungsten bar.
And then the last one, you don't need to get it. I mean, most of that stuff will cover everything you need. But there's a couple of what people call impossible rivets. And I was using a really wide like stone ch chisel with a pivot point kind of sticking it in the really skinny space and then prying on that to give me my pressure and then setting the rivet that way. And it, it worked really well, but it's kind of jinky for lack of a better word. And this was probably five, ten bucks. So it eventually I went out and just was like, you know what, I'm getting this. And this is uh, from an, the aircraft tool supply website. And it's uh, number 142. And it has kind of that offset stuff I was talking about where you can use this to get into different areas. But what I was more interested in was this end. And so you have all this mass here and area to press down or up or whatever. And then you have this chiseled end that you can stick in. Uh, for a normal rivet, you need about half an inch of clearance between two surfaces. So you can slide that in, push on the rivet or well, hold it against the rivet and then rivet it. So these, this bar right here will get your impossible rivets. That, and so like places where some people are throwing in um, blind rivets and they're okay by vans even, I can get a rivet in there, a standard rivet in there with this bar. So not really necessary, but it sure makes stuff easier. And I wish I would have gotten it sooner, quite honestly, for the cost, instead of messing around with struggling with the uh, chisel because the chisel doesn't have enough mass really. So you're having to use your arm to kind of make up for that and your pivot point. And it is just a pain. This makes it easier. And it also was really great for getting under uh, to some rivets that were like under the edge of uh, J channel Sedefner inside the tail cone. So used it there. But like I said, that's the one where you can get away without it, probably. So that's the five bucking bars I went with. Uh, at this point, I can't see needing anything else to complete this project. Those five right there seem to cover everything that I've run into. Hopefully you liked the video. Uh, other, than buck, other than that tungsten bucking bar, all of them are going to be down in the $20 range or less even depending on where you pick them up, especially if you can get them used because they're just chunks of metal. You could also grab chunks of metal and cut out your own shapes as required, which is what a lot of mechanics do. That's all I have. Thanks for watching the video. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you have a bucking bar that you really love that's not one of those five, tell us about it in the comments. And think about subscribing. Thanks for watching.